Hi Year 6, welcome back. It's me again, Miss Fry, here for our second English lesson. Now, I thought for a little bit of a warm up, we'd um, get our brains switched on and engaged and I'm going to test you with a couple of riddles. I do love a riddle. I wonder if you could work out the answers. So the first one is, what can you catch but not throw? And the second one, I am an odd number. Take away a letter and I become even. What number am I? I wonder if you could work them out. So, did you get, did you think you worked out the answers to these riddles? What can you catch but not throw? A cold. And I am an odd number. Take away a letter and I become even. What number am I? Seven. I wonder if I tricked any of you. We'll try again with some more riddles tomorrow. Maybe you could find some more riddles and share them with someone at home as well. Now, we're on to our second English lesson, following our community unit and linking back to the great Kapok tree story that I read to you yesterday. And today we're actually focusing on the Amazon rainforest community and focusing our writing there. For this lesson, again, you'll need a pen or a pencil and some paper to write on. So please pause the video, go and grab those things, and then we'll be ready to start. I wanted to share our learning journey with you to start with here. Now, this is what we're going to be working on across these next nine sessions in order to achieve an outcome. Now, what we're going to be focusing on is a non-fiction piece of writing that you're going to be producing. And that's going to be a non-chronological report about the Amazon rainforest. The purpose being of this is to inform, to give information. So we're going to take quite a formal tone to it. Now, these are the steps that we're going to take across the next nine lessons. First of all, well, today, in fact, you're going to be going on a virtual school trip. From the comfort of your own home, you're going to be visiting the Amazon rainforest. And whilst you're there with your pen and paper handy, I'd like you to collect some facts that you're going to be able to use to inform and write within your non-chronological report. We're also going to do some skill building. So we're going to practice using our relative clauses, fronted adverbials and fronted subordinate clauses. And then you're going to apply these skills by writing an introduction to your report. We're then going to focus on further paragraphs in our non-chronological report. Firstly, by designing our own insect, which may be undiscovered in the Amazon rainforest. And practicing using prepositional phrases and expanded noun phrases to describe these insects. We're also going to do some more reading and you're going to answer some comprehension questions and collect facts about another creature that lives in the Amazon rainforest. And by doing those things, that's going to enable you to write two paragraphs, one about an insect and another about another creature, an animal, from the Amazon rainforest. And within those paragraphs and across your whole piece of text, we're really going to focus on cohesive devices in your writing to make sure that the writing is well structured and flows together. And um, finally, you're going to write a concluding paragraph for your report. And then in our last session, I'm going to support you to edit and improve your writing and then invite you to publish it and then send photos into your school um, via email because I'm sure they would absolutely love to see your hard work. Hopefully, this sounds like a good plan. So, without further ado, from the comfort of your own home, I invite you on a virtual school trip to the Amazon rainforest. But you can't get too comfy, I'm afraid. Um, what I'd like you to do is make sure you've got your pen and paper in front of you. And then perhaps as bullet points, if that's useful to you, I'd like you to record key facts that you hear and that you see whilst watching this video. What I'll do at different points in the video is I'll pause it to let you catch up on your note taking, but also to share some facts that I've jotted down in that time as well. Welcome to the Amazon Rainforest and get ready to see some exotic plants and animals that you won't see anywhere else in the world. A 
As you know, rainforests are one of the Earth's major habitats. Habitats are areas that share the same weather, plants, and animals. Tropical rainforests are located around the world in Central and South America, parts of Africa, Asia, and Australia. They are usually found close to the equator. I'll just pause there for a moment because there was quite a lot of facts shared in that initial, well, 40 seconds or so. So you may have some facts written down, such as the Amazon is home to exotic plants and animals that will not be seen anywhere else in the world. You might also have that rainforests are one of the Earth's major habitats that share the same weather plants and animals. Perhaps that rainforests are found near to the equator and are located in parts of South America, Africa, Asia and Australia. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you need to catch up in your notes. But I'll also pause the video too. We'll carry on. Millions of years ago, rainforests covered most of the earth. This is where the dinosaurs once lived. Now they cover only 7% of the earth, but are home to half of the world's animal and plant species. Today, we are going to explore the South American rainforest in the Amazon basin. It is the largest of all the rainforests. The Amazon rainforest is about 2.5 million square miles, a bit smaller than the 48 states of the U.S. Here, you'll find more than 1,600 species of birds, 230 kinds of snakes, 600 different mammals, 40 different turtles, and 70,000 kinds of insects. I thought I'd just pause the video there because you've got some facts right in front of you that you may wish to record. And I'll let you catch up on a few other notes. If you need to, just pause the video. Many of these species can't be found anywhere else in the world. You will also hear this rainforest called Amazonia because the mighty Amazon River runs through it. The Amazon is 4,000 miles long and is the second longest river in the world. As their name tells us, rainforests get much more rain than anywhere else in the world. It usually rains about 260 inches each year, but can reach as much as 400 inches. I had a quick look that up on a converter to convert inches into meters. So just thought I'd share that with you in case you want to add it into your notes. 260 inches is about 6.6 .6 meters, with just over six and a half meters in depth. Think of, think of a meter stick in school. Six over six and a half of those in depth of how much rain might fall, and actually going up to a possible 400 inches, which is actually over 10 meters of rainfall. Not only is it wet, it is also very warm since it's so close to the equator. The average daily temperature is usually between 86 and 95 degrees. A wet and warm region like this means that everything grows well. This explains why the trees are so incredibly tall. Some parts of the rainforest are in mountainous areas. Up high, the treetops are always covered in a rainy, wet mist. They appear to be in the clouds, which is why these areas are called cloud forests. The Amazon, along with every other tropical rainforest, has four layers. The emergent layer, the canopy, the understory, and the forest floor. Each layer has its own story to tell. The emergent layer is the highest in the rainforest. It is where the tallest of the trees stick out from the top of the canopy. These are also the oldest trees in the Amazon rainforest, maybe even hundreds of years old. They can easily grow 165 feet tall. Some grow even higher. 
In order to live so high up in the rainforest, animals need to be able to fly or climb. Up this high, you might find the South American harpy eagle using the trees to look for its next meal. Okay, I'll just pause it there for a moment. Hopefully you've managed to collect quite a number of facts from our virtual school trip so far. Um, I'll just share the next page with you where I've recorded a number of key facts. Please feel free to pause the video and you can add some of these facts in with yours so you've got a vast array of information to use in your non-chronological report tomorrow. This will really help you. Okay, we're going to work on a little bit of skill building now. So what I want you to do with your facts is just pop them to the side for a moment. You will need them, you'll need that information, but just pop them to the side just for a moment and just have a new piece of paper and a pen in front of you. Now we're going to work on our skill of relative clauses today because when we are writing our introductions for our non-chronological reports tomorrow, we need to make sure that relative clauses, one of our year six skills are included in there to make sure we're really successful. Now, a relative clause is a type of subordinate clause. It's used to modify, change, or describe a noun. That's why we use them. Now, a relative clause can't stand alone. It has to go with the main clause for it to make sense. So we've got our main clause, which makes sense on its own, our relative clause to add that extra detail to modify or describe the noun. A relative clause adds extra information about the noun and often starts with the relative pronouns who, which, and that. And we're going to have a look at some examples together. Now, here is my first example. Miss Fry taught the year six children. This is my main clause, but I'm going to add a relative clause to it to describe and to modify the noun of children. So now I've got Miss Fry taught the year six children who are very focused on their learning. Now creating our complex sentence. We've got our relative pronoun here, who, which relates to the noun of the children. And the reason we use who as a relative pronoun is when we're referring to people or a person. Let's look at another example. So, he walked along the picturesque beach. Now, this is a main clause. It makes sense on its own already. He walked along the picturesque beach. But I'm going to use a relative clause to modify the noun beach. Here we are. He walked along the picturesque beach that seemed to be never ending. Again here, I've got my relative pronoun that, and that relates back to the noun beach, which I've described as seemed to be never ending. We'll have a look at one further example before we link it back to our learning about the, our new learning about the Amazon rainforest and the facts we've collected. <clears throat> so a relative clause can also be an embedded clause. And that means it doesn't come at the end of the sentence. It comes in the middle of the sentence. It's embedded after the noun that it's modifying if the noun doesn't fall at the end of the sentence. So an example, the main clause is the oak tree marked the entrance to the forest. Now the noun that is being modified here is the oak tree and this is why the relative pronoun um, for, uh, comes after the noun forming a, an embedded clause here or some might call it a drop-in clause here with your, with your relative now, we've used the relative pronoun which to modify the oak tree, the tree. Okay, let's use our facts now and apply this um, prior learning that we're now revisiting and practicing this skill and see if we can relate it to our work on the Amazon rainforest and the facts that we've collected. So I've got a main clause here. The Amazon is approximately 2.5 million square miles in area. Now, I'm going to add an embedded clause, 
a relative clause, which is also an embedded clause um, here. And the reason it's an embedded clause is because I am modifying the noun of the Amazon. Okay? So I've used my relative pronoun, which, and my relative clause to add extra information, extra detail and describe the Amazon linked in with the main clause, linked to the rest of the sentence. So I've got the Amazon, which is the world's largest rainforest, is approximately 2.5 million square miles in area. It's really important that when you are using relative clauses, that the information that you add to the noun, the, the description of the noun or the modification of the noun, links directly into the sentence, especially when you're writing an informative non-fiction text. So let's look at another example. Rainforests are home to half of the world's species of plants and animals. Now here, I wonder where you think a relative clause could be added. Which noun's going to be modified? Pause the video for a moment and see if you can add a relative clause to this main clause. Well done. You may have different ideas to what I have done. That doesn't mean that yours are wrong and mine right, but here is an example of what you could have added. So rainforests are home to half of the world's species of plants and animals, which cannot be seen anywhere else in the world. Now, this relative clause comes after the nouns of plants and animals. I've used my relative pronoun, which, um, first, of, um, before the rest of my relative clause to modify the nouns to add extra detail about the plants and animals, the fact that they can't be seen anywhere else in the world. Now, I've popped my key facts up here in case you want to add to yours, because I'm going to set you a task where you're going to be writing or adding some relative clauses to some existing main clauses using the information you've just collected from the video. Feel free to pause back on this if you need to, or to flip back on your video. Now, what your task is, is you're going to rewrite these three sentences and add a relative clause to each one. Please use the facts that you've gathered already, or other facts that you may already know about the Amazon rainforest, in order to um, modify chosen nouns within the sentences to add in your relative clauses. Once you've done that, Perhaps you can write two of your own sentences, which both include a relative clause as well. Please pause the video and have a go at that task. What we'll do is we'll come back at the end um, in just a moment and review some possible, uh, some possible ideas or some possible relative clauses that could have been added. And then you can reflect on that by looking at your own writing. Off you go. Okay, let's review some of your possible answers. So we started with the main clause, the Amazon River is the second longest river in the world. Now, the noun here that I have modified or added extra detail to is the, is the river, the Amazon River. And it's actually a proper noun because it's the name of the river. And because it's talking about the length of the river, I've decided to add extra detail about how long that actually is. This forms, this is a relative clause, which is also an embedded clause because it needs to follow the noun of the, um, the Amazon River. So I now have the Amazon River, which stretches an incredible 4,000 miles, is the second longest in the world. You could have had a relative clause at the end of this um, main clause because you finish with the noun world. However, your relative clause would have needed to describe or add extra detail about the world rather than the Amazon River. Okay, another example, you had um, the main clause, the emergent layer of the rainforest is formed by the tallest trees. Now here, I've used the relative pronoun that to start my relative clause and to modify and add extra description detail about um, the trees. Okay, so now I have the emergent layer of the rainforest is formed by the tallest trees that are home to a vast array of exotic birds. 
Hopefully you're feeling good so far. You've managed to add in some relative clauses, not necessarily the same as mine, but hopefully you've added them in the right places and you're feeling a bit confident about that. Good, well done. Let's have a look at the last main clause that I asked you to add a, relev um, a relative clause to. So we had rainforests are one of the Earth's major habitats. And we've added um, a relative clause here again as an embedded clause. Rainforests, which are usually located close to the equator, are one of the Earth's major habitats. So I've used my relative pronoun which to start off my relative clause and I'm adding extra information about the rainforest. So that is the noun that I'm modifying. I also asked you to use the fact you collected to write two of your own sentences, um, each which include a relative clause. Have you been able to do that? Perhaps you could read them out loud. Do they make sense? Fantastic, that's brilliant. Now, well done, that's really fantastic work today. What we're going to do now is we're going to have a pause and actually I'm gonna let us go back to watching um, the rest of the video clip of our virtual school trip um, to the Amazon rainforest. Okay, So you can relax a little bit more, but perhaps you could add some extra facts um, to your fact sheet already. Tomorrow, we are going to be um, skill building and practicing some more skills of fronted adverbials and fronted subordinate clauses. Um, and we'll do another review here again of the relative clauses. And then you'll be able to use all three of these skills to write your introductions for your non chronological reports. So please don't lose these pieces of paper. You will definitely need the fact information and the facts you've collected, and you'll definitely need your relative clause work so that you can apply it to your learning tomorrow. Okay, now you can sit back and relax and finish your virtual school trip. And I'll just share that with you just now. eagle using the trees to look for its next meal they also protect their young by building their nest up high in the emergent layer you can see many colorful birds here including many members of the parrot family like these conures these parrots live in noisy flocks high up in the trees this red-winged parrot uses its strong, curved beak to feed on fruit, seeds, flower buds, and insects. Spider monkeys can spin their lives up here in the treetops and are expert climbers. They are able to use their arms, legs, and even their tail to grip the branches. The blue morpho butterfly is one of the many colorful butterflies that we see flitting around the treetops. Moving down to the next layer, we find ourselves in the canopy. This is the umbrella of treetops covering the rainforest. It is the main layer of the rainforest. More animals live in the canopy than anywhere else in the Amazon jungle. In fact, about two-thirds of the rainforest animals can be found in the canopy. Here, you might see the slow-moving sloth, who hangs upside down all day, even to sleep. Really good example of a relative clause there, adding using the relative pronoun who to modify the noun about the sloth to add the extra detail that he sleeps almost all day pinch that if you like. Right, we'll carry on watching. The emergent layer and the canopy share a lot of the same residents. Birds, monkeys, snakes, butterflies, and insects. You might find this emerald tree boa another superb climber. See how well camouflaged it is to look just like the leaves on the trees? If a heller monkey catches sight of one of these snakes, it will sound an alarm that would be impossible to ignore. The shrieks are ear-splitting. 
macaws, like this brilliant hyacinth macaw, are one of the many birds moving around the canopy. Many animals are able to find food, water, and shelter here, and so they have no need to leave. The canopy is the home of choice for 30% of the world's birds, like this red-green macaw. Here is a toucanet. Bird life ranges from giant eagles weighing up to 17 pounds to these tiny hummingbirds weighing only a few ounces. Hummingbirds feed on the nectar of flowers like this long-tailed silk. Beautiful, isn't it? Their long bills let them get deep into the flower like this sword-billed hummingbird. As they feed, they are dusted with the flower's pollen. When they fly away, they spread the pollen wherever they go. These colorful toucans like to hang around the canopy eating leaves, fruits, and nuts. Here is one of the most recognizable creatures in the Amazon, the red-eyed tree frog. It has suction cups on its tiny feet, allowing it to hang on tight. Insects have an easier time of it since they can crawl up and down the trees. So can the spiders. These tarantulas are some of the world's largest spiders and can grow as large as dinner plates. They come out at night to hunt. Chameleons live in the canopy along with other lizards. A close-up look at chameleons show us that they can move each eye separately. This helps them to be on alert against lurking predators. Chameleons are masters of disguise, able to change their color if they are scared or if they want to blend into the background. Geckos, too, can change the color of their skin for protection. This ability, known as camouflage, helps them to survive. Camouflage allows an animal to either hide from predators or to sneak up on prey when hunting. We hope you enjoyed meeting some of the exciting animals that live in the Amazon rainforest. I hope you enjoyed your virtual school trip today. And well done for recording key important facts and for practicing your relative clauses today. Please save that work and we'll use it tomorrow. I'll see you then. Bye.